Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I am one of your hosts, Kevin Hub. This is Avery and Lefebvre, and this is a, another podcast we're doing for you guys. Episode 8. Episode the Ocho. Eight. The Ocho. The Ocho. It's like ESPN 8, but without lawnmower racing. Which is a shame, really. We could sponsor lawnmower racing. We probably could. I, I really want to do a, a lemons race. Not Le Mans. Lemons. lemons. You know what that is, right? Where you buy the five hundred dollar car, yeah, and then you got to race it. Mm -hmm. But and then if you win, you win five. Uh, the prize is paid in nickels. Ooh. But it, like you have penalties. Like if you hit someone, they weld like a train wheel on the side of your car and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I've thought about it, and the car I would choose for that too would be like an eighty eight Dodge Omni Sport because the Sport had a turbo in it, and if you cut the suspension. It makes it handle so much better. I read a whole thing in Car and Driver on this. I've I've researched this, but the problem is I can't wear a five point harness without killing myself uh -huh. because of everything that's happened to me. Right. So I, I'm not allowed to drive. It's the same reason I can't do a demolition derby. We'll just have to get a different driver. No, I want to fucking drive. Well, I guess. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to invent our own harness. That won't kill you. Maybe. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're, pretty, we're pretty smart. We can figure that out. It's, it's we'll, just, we'll strap each leg in. We'll strap you across the chest and put you with one of those uh, NASCAR neck braces. Well, you have to wear one of those, I believe. Okay. I think so. I would hope so. I don't know. Realistically. Way off topic. It or is it on topic? I don't know. Maybe. Something we could sponsor. Much like how this episode is sponsored by AngrySnowboardersStore.com. If you are listening or watching this which will probably come out on Monday the 10th, uh, June 15th, noon, Mountain Standard Time, AngrySnowboarderStore.com will be stocked with all sorts of new apparel. Good stuff. Lots of good stuff. Lots of, lots of apparel. So give us all your money. All your money. Uh, let's see. In the meantime, since the last podcast, the season has ended. Yep. I finished it out on June 28th with a powder day. Maybe on the 27th. May 28th? May 28th. It hasn't hit June 28th yet. You're right. May 28th. It better not be a powder day on June 28th. I won't be upset. No, I think I think, <laughs> I think we're done with the late season storms. <laughs> yeah, I think we're yeah. safe now. Um, but yeah, I finished it out on a, with a powder day. I got in a solid hour of riding before all of Denver showed up, and yep. then they tried to talk at me. Yep, yep, yep. That'll happen. Uh, but product reviews are done. We have 126 snowboards, and I believe somewhere close to 30 bindings. I haven't totally tallied it up. Yeah. So those will be dropping end of summer, start of fall. So there's that. I don't mm -hmm. know. What can you say about this? Uh, the end of season? How was your season this year? Fucking long, man. Really long. Ten months. Yeah. Like, 10 months of powder. Yeah, seriously. Like, I mean, it fixed the drought in Colorado. That should say a lot. I um, heard they might try to, like, pump it into Lake Powell. They and, should. And, like, raise it. They should, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, if they think any, I mean, they can't predict out that far, but if they have any thoughts that next winter is even going to be at least average, then they should definitely do that. But, yeah, because, was there a day in March that wasn't a pow day? Oh, yeah, there's like four, five, maybe three, yeah, six. Four five. Yeah. I don't know. I got a couple park days in March, I think. Yeah, no, I, I can't it, remember. It was mostly power for like it a was. whole month. It was. I was out of uh, state. I was in Utah. That's right. You were for that, yeah. For the big nine foot storm. Mm -hmm. Didn't miss anything there because no one could get anywhere nope. and the resorts couldn't open. Yeah. So um, there was that. But yeah, it, I wrote a a lot of pow. It was great. Like, the end of the season when I was testing bindings, I got to ride my Endeavor archetype. Oh, yeah. And I was like, God, I love this board. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just still one of the best, if not the best powder board I've ever ridden. Like, love that thing. It's good. And I rode a lot of powder boards this year. You did. That was definitely one of the big things we rode a lot this year is a lot of shapes and a lot of pow stuff. A lot of pow. Yeah. All the pow. Which I'm stoked on in the industry in general. Like, you can ride Switch on stuff that doesn't have twinness. <laughs> speaking of that, like, speaking of that, so I was riding my uh, my cool bean because like so what I did with you know you know how like when I'm testing like two boards or two bindings I'll set up multiple boards so mm -hmm. I'd swapped out from the uh, archetype to my cool bean because the power started to go hot yeah 
and uh, I'm on the chair. This guy hasn't said anything to me the whole ride up. We're like two towers from the top of the uh, Montezuma Bowl chair. And he looks down and he looks at the board and he goes to me, he goes, oh, I guess you can't ride that thing, Switch. I'm like, that's what you want to say to me as we're getting ready to get off? Is you can't <laughs> ride that? I looked at him and I was like, no, you can't ride that Switch. I can ride that Switch. He's like, yeah, right. And I was like, this is one of my favorite park boards. And so I strapped in, and he's sitting there looking at me, and I popped a front one into a nose butter, and I just kept looking at him up the hill while I'm riding Switch, just doing a nose butter, and popped out and rode away. I was like, come on, man. I'll tell you yeah. what's scary with the cool beam, though, is hitting a jump switch. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was Marcus. or No, it was Bruce. It was Brucey. Uh he was, uh, he dared me to hit one of the baby jumps at Copper Switch. Oh, I haven't died. Oh, my God. So, you could see where the uh, tail had pronged into the lip. And then, and the funny thing was, I went to just do, like, a cab one. Mm -hmm. And I took it to cab, um, cab three. <laughs> so, I landed Switch. And I was like, this is not what I intended to do. This no. was not fun. Uh, and that, yeah. But, yeah, I wrote so many frigging powder boards this year it's it's absurd you know, we got lucky that everybody sent us power boards on a year that were constantly pow yeah, that's true like yeah. i mean i was that last week before i pretty much gave up on uh riding which i mean the basin closed june 2nd for full time and now they're just doing weekends till mm -hmm. the 23rd uh i think i got uh, the last week or the last two weeks that they were open I think I only got like two or three sunny park days. Everything else was like wake up, it was pow morning, and it would be blower pow, then it would go I'd swap out to something that could handle it, and it would be hot pow, then it would be chunder pow. Yep. And uh yeah, so there was there was that. Um let's see. Uh, I'm gonna plug my friend Lauren Weibert. She's going to defend the American title for the Deaf Olympics. And here's the bullshit thing about the Deaf Olympics. It is recognized by the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association and the FIS, but they get zero support at all to recognize them. And she holds gold in women's slope style first. She was the first to do that in Russia. And I think, is it silver in border cross or bronze? But I think it's silver in border cross. for women. So she's got a golden slope and a silver and bronze, but she's got to go to Italy to defend herself so she's trying to raise money so I will have a link in the description of either the video or the podcast on Podbean for this um, if you so feel inclined to support her that would be awesome that would be really helping the culture of snowboarding and Lauren is awesome she's like an old friend of mine uh, love her to death one of my favorite experiences ever with Lauren was I flew to Reno and she and I drove down to Oakland to go see uh, Iron Maiden, but they had sold out of handicap tickets. So like I couldn't get her, we couldn't like get good tickets cause she was deaf. So we show up and talk to the head usher, which our seats were just general admission and explain the situation. The guy's like, well, you gotta go talk to this woman. So we go down to talk to this woman and she is tweaking on meth <laughs> like straight just tweaking she looks at both of us she's like i don't have time to deal with this and threw two bracelets at us for front row so we were like fourth row because i didn't want to put lauren in the pit we were close enough that i got set on fire by the pyrotechnics like my hair caught on fire but the best quote was like run to the hills comes on and lauren looks over and she's like avran i can hear and i was like what <laughs> i can't hear shit lauren <laughs> And she's like, I can hear. And I was like, okay. Perfect. Good. Perfect. So, um, but yeah, that was, oh God, that was years and years. And I don't even think I had started angry at the time when we went to do that. But yeah, uh, Lauren's rad. And anyone that wants to support her and help her get there, like she's trying to raise, I think, a little over $4,000 to get to Italy and stuff. Um, that'd be good. Or you can follow her, just even follow her on uh, Instagram. Her handle is at deafness or the deafness. Cause that was the nickname I gave her way back in the day. I kept referring to her as the deafness. Sure. Sure. So that, that really stuck, but, um, yeah, be really cool to help get her back over there and promote it. Because if you watch, if you click the link and watch the story, she signs it and it's also written out. Basically she doesn't compete against 
uh, everyone else that can hear anymore or even do a lot of events because the last event she went to, no one would talk to her or like make eye contact with her because she can read lips really well. So she didn't know when she was dropping. No one wanted to help her. She's just sort of like in her own little world in there. Yeah, so, that's shitty. Yeah, it's super shitty. So um, be really cool just to have her go. Plus, I'm pretty sure she's probably going to dominate everyone again. So Yeah, that'll be cool. You know, America um, will get some medals. Yeah. So if you're pro-America, then you like deaf people, <laughs> you, should, uh, you should definitely help my friend Lauren out. Um, other news out of Shanghai for the uh, X Games. Yeah, this was amazing. We are extremely excited about this one. Fila skateboarding. So Fila snowboarding Fila. is coming. Major sponsorship in skateboarding from Fila. So not like you know they. I think they've had a couple dudes with some shoes here and there, but like never like a major. I don't even remember who the dude was, but it was a I, like major enough skater at Shanghai X Games. Full massive Fila logo T shirt. Yeah, so yes, Fila Snowboarding is hopefully coming, and I own FilaSnowboarding.com, <laughs> so that is my fucking retirement fund. Fila, get at me. Get at me. I'll fucking sell you that domain name. I'll give you a great price, only $100,000, because supposedly they're going to, um, the Chinese company that owns Fila, or owns the majority share or whatever is making the uniforms for the Chinese team, and they think it's going to be Fila, mm -hmm. is going to do the for the next Olympics for snowboarding, that they're going to do the uniforms for it. So that would be really, really interesting if they... Uh, I just want some Fila snowboard boots, man. I don't even want Fila snowboard boots. I just want to be like, called it, bought the domain before all you bitches, pay me fucking money. Yeah, but whatever. And I just renewed that domain name, and that price went up on the renewal. It was bullshit. I think I had to pay like a hundred and something bucks. It's kind of a lot. It was. I was like, they're like, would you like to give this up? And I was like, oh fuck no. Yeah. But then again, I think I was also renewing like sixty other domain names. Well, that would push the price up a little bit. <laughs> well, whatever. I still think I need to buy like the better ride. <laughs> Probably. Or the gooder ride. The gooder. <laughs> the gooder ride. The more the more good ride. The more better ride. Yeah. Just just fuck with James Beastie. Fuck that kook. Uh, that would be really funny. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh, definitely offended a lot of people in Instagram since the last podcast. I was doing that whole fake marketing push. So, like, anytime I post a photo of a next year's board, I come up with, like, a bullshit marketing story. Right, right. About the name or something. This dude went ballistic on a board that it wasn't even the board that I think it was on the ravine photo and he's like my powder division the whole die cut fell out of the base and he sends me this fucking video and I'm gonna bet this is exactly what happened because he said he was riding powder he fucking dinged a rock in the corner of the die cut on his powder division peeled up a little probably could have been fixed he yanked the whole fucking thing off you could see where it had been pulled off the base like and he was just like, Rome is the worst, and this, and this, and this. And I was like, well, dude. And he's like, it ruined my whole trip. You're riding Snowbird. You are 30 minutes from Salty Peaks and Milo Sport. There is a Christie Sports out there. There are numerous stores that will have a demo board for you. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that you couldn't do this. And this guy just kept going on and on, and I just kept calling him out and calling him out. And finally, he's like... You're one of the worst things for snowboarding because we should all be brothers in snowboarding. And you, and I was like, well, dude, you're not my fucking brother. And here's the difference between me and you. You're someone that snowboards. You're not a snowboarder. Dude was skiing at Elta the day before, so fuck him. Yeah. Skiing at Elta. Fuck him. I don't give a fuck about him. And then some other kids started sending me messages and be like, well, I broke three Rome mods. And he sends me a photo, and I looked at it, and you could see, like, I think he had, like, an old Malavita or something, the one with that point on uh, the heel. Yep. And he was popping the top sheets, and you could see where the thing mm -hmm. was counter-twisting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, that's not a warranty. You need to learn how to land. And he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, I have warrantied a lot of boards, and I can tell you when a binding does damage. Like, dude, this the, the amount of people that just get deer in the headlights when they come in with a broken board, and they don't have the binding on it, and they just bring in a bro broken board, and I go... You land back seat, and they just look at me like, how did he know? 
Because we've seen a lot of fucking broken See, boards. See, the funny thing was, it like, wasn't even the back binding that the did front? it. was the front. Was so he doing tell- front flips? No, it that's looks, my next question. He said he was hit. He said he was hitting jibs at Big Bear. So my guess is, oh yeah, he came off a kink and had all his weight forward yeah. from it, and it slammed right heel yeah. heavy. And he's pushing through kinks instead of all of, like kind of pushing over kinks. Yeah, so yeah. It, it was just pushing into it, and it was mm-hmm. popping the top sheet. He's like, they warrantied three of these for me, and then they told oh, you're me you're fucking lucky. Then. Yeah, no, that's what I said. And I was just like, oh, my God, you fucking morons. And the guy's just like, you don't know what you're talking about. And he kept trying. He's like, I've ridden for 17 years. And I was like, cool. Cool story, dude. I know lots of people that have been driving cars for 60 years, and they don't know shit about them. I don't care how long you've been riding. That doesn't mean you know anything about the gear you're on. And then he's like, my O-Matic never broke. And I was like, I'm really surprised your O-Matic didn't break because those things, the sidewalls used to pop right off of them because they didn't put enough of that foil between the edge uh-huh. and the sidewall yeah, i remember that most of the dudes we knew that were red nomadics had they, they were sidewalls. having that and so yeah. what happened well it was pretty funny because i caught on to what was going on after i broke i think my second one and i was like looking at it and i emailed um uh tanya otero and jason Keynes, and i was just like hey guys there's not there's no dampening foil in here that should be here for that bonding agent and it was the factory it was cutting corners over uh. in uh china so uh and then after that the uh, they lasted like another year and they weren't popping after that. And then Echelon was having their boards made there. And I remember telling Don, yeah, the owner of thing. Echelon, I was like, Hey, cause some of the samples were doing it, but it was only on certain models. And I was like, and they were the ones that reused Echelon molds. And wow. I was like, make sure you double up on the foil in there. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, but uh, dude, this, uh, the level of rectal bleeding hurt, just emanating from dude. these guys. I remember this one. Was yeah. so fucking priceless. And I was just like, oh my God. And he's like, he made some comment about, well, he's like, you're just hitting this to get likes. And I was like, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> I'm like, if I was in it to get likes and everything like that uh, and have view and have uh, whatever followers, I would just buy them. <laughs> Yeah, that's what people do. You realize that, right? <laughs> yeah, like this guy was the guy just wasn't a snowboarder. And I'm like, the funny thing is, I know the guys that do the warranty at Rome follow I know their personal accounts because I know who they are. Yeah. And I know they follow mm-hmm. my accounts and their social media guy. And I know that they were just reading those comments. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, and the funny right. thing was how many of you guys, the listeners, followers, viewers, started roasting this dude and telling him to fuck off. It was so funny. I get it. You're upset that you had an issue with it, but going around and sitting there and being like, I, and the funny thing was this dude wasn't even a follower of mine. He was looking for anything with Rome tagged in it. And yep. he was just, he was leaving comments and it, dude, you could just see like, he was just blasting Rome because he, he banged had, a rock. He banged a rock. Yeah. And then he's like, they couldn't fix it. And he's, I was like, well, you peeled the die cut off no. and then you threw it away. You peeled it off on the hill. How the fuck do you think you're going to ride down, you fucking moron? Yeah. Like, I I fucking, um, I blew years ago when I was product testing for Never Summer. I hit the seam on the giant eagle on the base and just blew the fucker apart on the backside of copper. Uh, you want to talk about one of the most painful rides back to the base area? It's like two miles of just fucking this thing dragging and pulling me to the right. Just bleh, bleh. and um, but you didn't grab it and yank it out. No, I waited till I got to the base and then I yanked it out and then I I cut everything around it and just had a giant gaping hole and then I melted a Gatorade bottle into it for a cheap ghetto base weld. <laughs> Which everyone's like, what are you doing? I'm over there with like a lighter just melting it right into the base. And be like, this will fucking work for the rest of the day. I don't care. Um, don't do that. Uh, go to a shop. You should go to a shop, but I just don't give a fuck. I also knew that like I was just going to ride the board the rest of the day and never ride it again. So yeah. it didn't fucking matter. Uh, yeah, fuck. Um, yeah, so there was that. Let's see. What else? Oh, had the social justice warrior. Tell me that my toxic masculinity and in, <laughs> insular negativity is effect is why he didn't deserve to win the snowboard that we were giving away. So I asked him if he needed a safe space, and supposedly people need safe spaces from me on the internet because I'm a white male that doesn't give a fuck who I. Which I'm pretty sure the safe space from us on the internet is anywhere else on the internet. I mean, you, vol- you volunteer to watch us. Yeah. I'm not. 
Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, there's a big difference between like somebody that seeks out someone else and then you feel like you need a safe space. And we don't actively look for people to talk to. You talk to us. Yeah. You so, you, you made the choice to make that comment, not me. Yeah. Hey, like <laughs> and uh, like Dude, there's another guy that guys. sucks dicks with his butthole. I don't give a fuck about that guy. I just like you giant fucking pussy. You're the type of guy that like would try to talk to me on the chairlift and think we're bros, and I'd be like, don't fucking speak to me. And he and it would just shut him down. Like this is a guy that's probably so intimidated. Like if if I was just not even knowing he existed walking to the chairlift near him, he'd probably shit himself. Yeah. Hey, this this guy, oh, what a fucking little pussy. Couldn't believe that but we will be announcing the winner of the board giveaway in this podcast yes so we've got that going on and then um already starting to think about the next giveaway i got i got a few things i need to get rid of yeah <laughs> um so we're gonna do that you got anything else to add on what we've been working on oh really it kind of covers it all right yeah